news from God to know that God will forgive you for all your sins and God can change your life and God can transform you because of the tremendous love that he has for the world. And when Jesus came into the world, he demonstrated and showed the amazing love and grace of God. Amen. So you need to understand that the gospel is good news and God wants you to open your hearts to his word he wants you to open your heart to the truth that He has for you because He loves you so much and God can change your life if you are humble enough to open your heart to God and kneel before the cross of Calvary and acknowledge the truth that God in Christ died on Calvary for the sins of the world to make atonement for your sins so that when you stand before God in the day of judgment, you will not be judged by God. He will accept you and receive you because you have been forgiven, because your sins have been atoned for by the precious blood of Jesus on Calvary. Now, I'm going to try and share with you why sometimes you think God is far away and God does not seem to answer your prayers. And I want to go to the scripture which teaches how Jesus taught the disciples and everybody that was listening how they should pray. So I'm going to read from the Gospel of Luke. Luke was a doctor and he loved the Lord Jesus. He was one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus. And he wrote the Gospel of Luke and he wrote how Jesus answers our prayers. Luke was filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit told him to write down these words to show you how to ask God, to show you how you can receive from God all the blessings you read about in the scriptures, all the blessings that you hear preached on TV and over the radio and by different pastors and churches. And you wonder, you know, why don't I experience that wonderful blessing they're talking about? Well, you need to understand how you can go about asking God for all the blessings that he has for you. So listen to the word of God from Luke chapter 11. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. So Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's Satan. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him for him to eat. And he will answer from within and say, Don't trouble me now. The door is shut and my children are with me. We're all in bed. I cannot rise and give anything to you. Jesus said, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Amen. Seek and you will find. Amen. Knock and it will be opened to you. Amen. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, yeah. and to him who knocks it will be opened. Preach. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? No. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Amen. You see what Jesus is doing here? Jesus recognized that all the Old Testament prophets, Moses, Abraham, Jeremiah, Isaiah, King David, all the prophets in the Scriptures 
were inspired by the Holy Spirit and they were able to speak about the blessings of God because the Holy Spirit was in their heart, in their minds, in the very innermost part of their being. So Jesus acknowledged that all those prophets down from Abraham down had been able to preach the word of God because of the Holy Spirit within them. And he acknowledged that what they said about the coming Messiah was true and he claimed before them by his actions and by his miracles to be the Messiah, the Saviour of the world. So Jesus acknowledged that the Holy Spirit is real and he taught four specific things about the Holy Spirit. In the scriptures, if you read all the Gospels, you find that the Holy Spirit is the key to all of God's blessing for us. You yeah. cannot understand the message and the truth of God without the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are made with a physical body, but you also have a spirit inside of you. You've got thoughts, and you think about things all the time. You think about your friends. Sometimes you think about helping someone. Sometimes you think about loving someone. Sometimes you think about being rude to someone. Sometimes you think about things that God calls sin. You've got a spirit. You're alive. You're the, the life within you is being put there by God. God is spirit and it says in the scriptures that he breathed into you the breath of life. In you is the spirit of God, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be saved just because your life is of God. But because you are a spiritual being, God by his Holy Spirit can communicate with you in your spirit. So you need to listen to the Holy Spirit that speaks in your heart. God speaks to you in your conscience by the Holy Spirit and he says he loves you he loves you with a love that cannot be measured, but he also says that you've got a problem in your life. And that problem is stopping you from experiencing all the blessings of God. That problem is the problem of sin. And God says by the Holy Spirit, if you repent of your sins, if you turn away from them, if you come and confess them to God, he will set you free from them. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you and he will deliver you. Do you want to be delivered from the strongholds in your life? Do you want to be delivered from all those things that make life miserable? Do you want to be delivered from all those things that make you unhappy? Do you want to be delivered from all those things that you know are wrong, that only God can do it by His Holy Spirit in you, but you've got to respond. And to respond, you have to be humble enough to say, Yes, Lord, it's true what your Word says. The whole world is fallen because of the sin of Adam. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is not one righteous, not one person. So we have to be humble before God and come and say, Lord, it's true. I am a sinner like your word says. I come to you and I confess my sins. And then you speak it out to God in private because Jesus said, if you go into your room, if you want to pray to God, go into your room. Go privately to God. Go and Go and kneel before God in your room. Thank you. Go and kneel before God in your room and confess your sins to God. And the scripture says that God sees this. It's in secret because it's between you and God, but God sees it. And the scripture says God will reward you openly. He will forgive you and set you free and you will know it's real, you know it's true by the power of the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus taught the disciples to pray he gave them the Lord's Prayer and most of us have heard the Lord's Prayer and we know about the Lord's Prayer but see Jesus didn't stop there because sometimes the Lord's Prayer can become a bit of a ritual that's all it is we kind of repeat it we don't think too much about what it says and we say it in church or we say it in a group we don't think about it but as soon as Jesus finished about the Lord's Prayer then he told this parable this story of a man who had a friend come to stay with him and he didn't have any supplies to feed him so he went and knocked on the door of his friend at night his friend was in bed with his children in bed and his friend said go away go away but the, the friend kept knocking and said i need help so jesus gave this parable immediately after the lord's prayer why because he wants us to ask for our personal needs whatever your need is god wants you to ask for it the Lord's Prayer is a prayer that you can pray in church and not think about sometimes. But God said, I want you to come to me with your particular needs. Because this man had a friend, and the friend said, go away, I'm busy, I'm, I'm asleep in bed, I haven't got time to, to help you now. But the man kept knocking. 
And eventually his friend said, listen, what do you want? And gave him the supplies he needed because he had somebody come on a journey and he wanted to be a good host to him. So Jesus is teaching on prayer. And then Jesus spoke these amazing words in the scriptures. He says these words. After teaching about prayer, he says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And everyone who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. Now Jesus is saying, everyone who comes to God in prayer and asks will receive. Who seeks God will find him. Who knocks, the door will be opened. Now if you are able to get hold of a translation of the Bible, which talks about the original language of this verse, about asking and seeking and knocking, this is what you will find that Jesus is actually saying. He's saying, ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Amen. He's saying, don't give up. Don't come to God and say, Lord, I want you to help me. Nothing happens and you go away and forget about God. No, you've got to keep asking. Because Jesus said, this man that had a problem, he had no food to give to the person that was coming to stay with him went to a friend and knocked on the door. His friend said, go away, go away, I'm asleep, I'm in bed, I haven't got time to do anything to help you now. The man kept knocking on the door. Eventually his friend got up and gave him his supplies. Jesus is saying that he is our friend. And if we keep asking him, we, he will respond to us. So we need to know that this is how we come to God. You might have a big problem in your life. It might be drugs, it might be pornography, it might be stealing, it might be carrying knives, it might be carrying guns, it might be doing all kinds of stuff you know is wrong. And you just ask God to help you once and then forgot about it. No, you've got to keep on asking God. Because God wants to see that you really mean business. God wants to see that you've got faith. See what the, the board says there? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can only please God by faith. You can only please God by responding to his word. It says that God loves those who have faith. You can read about people in the scriptures that please God because of their faith. They trusted in him. God wants us to trust him. He wants us to come like a little child to his father and keep asking for whatever he wants. You know, children are good at asking their father for things. If a young kid wants a new bike because his friends have got a new bike, he's going to say, Dad, I want a new bike. His dad said, I can't afford it, go away. You can't have it, no, maybe next year. So the kid comes back again and says, Dad, I want a new bike. He passes his father until eventually the father says, all right, we'll do something about it. We'll give you the new bike. This is what Jesus is saying in Luke chapter 11. We need to keep asking God for our needs, our particular needs. We need to understand that God wants our attention and he wants us to come to him and ask for everything. Sometimes we think God is not listening. Sometimes it seems that God is not answering us. But if we are realistic, and if we're kneeling before our bed at night by ourselves, and we say to God, how come, Lord, I can't hear an answer? You'll find the Holy Spirit will begin to speak about something in your life that God wants to deal with. And God is saying, when you deal with that, then you will be set free. Then you will know the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Then you will know that all the promises and blessings of God are available to you. See, God wants our attention. He wants us to come and ask and keep on asking and keep on seeking and keep on knocking. Because God loves us so much that we don't really understand it. We don't really understand it. The Apostle Paul said, Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. It is not just out there in the sky. The love of God is in Christ Jesus. That's why you have to come to Christ. The Christ who came into the world. You read about Christ, he's not just another religious guru. You read in the scriptures that being in the form of God, he took upon himself the form of a man and humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Therefore he is highly exalted by God. You see, God himself humbled himself to come and talk to us. So what's wrong with us if we will not humble ourselves before him and come and say to God, how wonderful is your gospel? How glorious is the good news that you, O oh God, came into the world 
and you shed your blood on Calvary's cross for my sins, so that I will be forgiven. You might ask the question, well, why does God have to do that? You see, God is holy. God is perfect. God is pure. The scripture says sin cannot dwell in his presence. A sinful human being who has not had their sins atoned for cannot know the presence of God. If you want to know the presence of God, you have to do what Jesus said. You have to come and repent of your sins. You have to look at the cross and accept that he died there for you. You have to receive him as your saviour. And when you humble yourself before God and do that, then you begin to pray to God and ask him about your needs and keep on asking and keep on seeking the answer. Then God is pleased because now you are acting by faith and he will come by the Holy Spirit into your spirit and you will know that God has saved you. A long time ago, the man called Job in the scriptures, when everybody was saying, well, look, you must be a bad sinner because everything's going wrong in your life. This is what he said. I know that my Redeemer liveth. I can say the same thing. Richard can say the same thing. We know that our Redeemer liveth. How? By the Holy Spirit bringing confirmation in our hearts that because we have accepted Christ as Saviour, acknowledge that we are sinful creatures in God's sight, opened our hearts to Jesus and accepted the fact that by His blood He shed on Calvary's cross He has made atonement for our sins. God is holy, we are sinful. So if we humble ourselves before a holy God, we will begin to understand in the scriptures why we read about all the sacrifices that the Jews had to make before God way back from Abram's time, right back at the beginning they made all these sacrifices. Because God was teaching them that He is holy and something has to be done about sinful humanity. And when you read about those sacrifices and understand that they have a spiritual significance, you will understand why the gospel is glorious. Because on the cross of Calvary, God in Christ came and gave His life that you might have life. Shared His blood that your sins might be forgiven. Shared His blood that you might be